by the IAO, International Accreditation Organization, USA. Sir has been the Vice President of IAO India Chapter. Sir has been elected as Fellow of Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland. Sir has been elected as Fellow of the Guild of Independent Scholars, International University of Humanities and Social Sciences, Escazo, Costa Rica. Sir has been awarded 300 US dollars for the research paper entitled Potentiality of Drama. Huge collection of various materials on the academic as well as administrative outputs of Sir. And now I would like to welcome and give this session to our first invited speaker who will be deliberating on Amenities to Humanities, a journey from pandemic to pan-academic. The mic is over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Patriot. Thank you very much for a nice uh, bio data of mine, though I don't consider myself to be like that, whatever you have mentioned. But uh, I do take the opportunity to thank you for this wonderful webinar. Hope I am audible. Yes, sir. You are very much audible to us. Okay. So good afternoon to each and everyone, those who are here in this webinar and wishing you a very, very happy Father's Day and also International Yoga Day with the eclipse. Yes, technology has given so many eclipses to us and every day we come across so many problems as far as technology is concerned. But this COVID-19 has given us a wonderful opportunity not only to tame the technology, but at the same time to keep technology in our pockets all the times. Technology is on our fingertips and we have to move with the technology. As our prime minister has said, Corona has come into our lives and we have to stay with Corona. We have to live with Corona and Corona will go with us. In the same way, we are living in the world of technology. We are with technology and technology is with all the time. And now our classroom, the real classroom will convert into the virtual classroom. And we have been trying hard to collect so many amenities to live. We have one house, then we purchase the other, then we have land, we have everything at our end. But what we do not have at our end is the amenities which are required for a human being. The amenities which we really require to have a wonderful relationship with the people, the amenities which we really want to survive in this world in a sustainable way. So all those amenities will come only with the help of humanities. And if we don't have humanities with us, if we don't study humanities, if we are not into humanities, then all the amenities, whatever we have collected are of no use. So in this era of uh, what we call pandemic, what is very important for each one of us is to see this pandemic should not make us panic, but we should create an atmosphere wherein we can make ourselves in a much, we can make ourselves a better citizen. And when we make ourselves as a better citizen, then we have to take a shift from amenities to humanities. Can you see my screen? Hello? Hello, Patriot. Uh, yes, sir, we can see. Yes, sir, we can see. Okay, right, right. So we have to move from amenities to humanities. And that's why I stated here a journey from pandemic to pan academic. We should not panic. And panic is not the need of the R. The need of the R is to overcome all the panic and move towards pan academic. And when we move from pandemic to pan academic, there we stand and that's what we are required to do in this world the world has converted into a global village and in this global village it's our duty now to teach human amenities and humanities to the next generation if we touch the future of the next generation if we say i'm there to help you out i'm there all the time to help you out then this panic of the pandemic will convert into pan-academic. And that's why the amenities to humanities. What are the amenities? The amenities we require is a house, 
a very good accommodation with full pack uh, documents, parking place, security system has to be up to date with swimming pools and central heating and cooling, payment terminals, everything we require. And we have everything at our end. But we do not have, what we do not have is the human amenities. And human amenities and humanities are foster social justice and equality. It helps to understand the human experience. It motivates to raise the questions. It develops critical thinking ability. It makes us creative and it develops new insight. When we teach to the next generation, being the teachers, being the facilitators in the world of Google and Wikipedia, we people have to develop a kind of an equality. We have to understand the people. We have to understand our students. We have to act according to the needs of the students rather than student centric, rather than teacher centric. We must go towards student centric. And we have to motivate all the time. And we have to raise so many questions in their minds. A critical thinking developing is very necessary. We have to move from lots to hearts, low order thinking skills to hearts, high order thinking skills. And we have to make them creative to use the technology. From digital literate, we have to make them digital fluent. So there has to be a leap from digital literate to digital fluent. If we can do that, then the real Buddha comes. And what real Buddha says, what we are is a gift of God. What we become is a gift to God. We are human beings and we have been born in this world with a gift from the God. But whatever we become, whatever we are going to become in the near future or even today or maybe tomorrow, it is going to be a gift to God. So let all of us become a gift to God. Let all of us develop the human amenities, compassion, love, affection, empathy. All these things have to be developed in this world. And this can be developed only with the help of humanities. If we study psychology, if we study literature, if we study poetry, if we study drama, all these branches of literature, they'll help you to understand the human sufferings. They'll help you to understand what humanity is, is all about. So there has to be a leap from this. And that's what the real education is. For me, education is nothing but educate the nation. If we can educate the nation, if we can cope up with the challenges of the present time, if we can make our students to understand the challenges well, if we can develop the skills in them, not only the intelligent quotient to be developed, not only the emotional quotient to be developed, but the need of the R is to develop the quotient of adversity. Adversity quotient is to be developed. We need to inculcate in students the adversity skills to cope up with the situation, not to get panic, but to overcome the panic and to make it more and more useful for each one of us. So all the education, whatever we are in the process of making education possible to each and everyone, it's the duty of each and everyone to educate the nation. And if we can do that, then what's very important in this challenging hour is every challenge is an opportunity to explore new territories and redefine, transform the self in a better way. Know thyself should be the watchword for each one of us. And if we know thyself, then more holistic manner through new modes and means of perception and working. We have to understand the new means of perception. We have to understand the new means of working. And when we understand this, then epidemics and pandemics are humanitarian crisis. And hence, they are the subject of humanities and of scientific research and analysis. So this epidemic and pandemic, they are the subjects of humanities. At the same time, they are the subjects of scientific research also. So we must cooperate with them. Humanities play a pivotal role in bringing forth the human element in the entire crisis, their struggle for adjustment, their dilemmas, their transformation as individual, as a part, and of the larger society. So humanities makes us to understand the social quotient. It makes us to understand what society is all about. 
and that's why in humanities we study about society we learn about society we know about society we come to know the nuances of the society and that's why the pandemic has affected the entire globe and every sphere of life be it economy be it social relationship or interaction be it physical as well as mental health and also the education system it has affected everyone and when it has affected in the context of education amenities available are expansive innovative and technologically oriented lot many technologies are available nowadays bombarding of technology is there then there has to be a judicial use of technology when we start using the technology in a judicial way the pandemic has transformed the entire world with a new kind of normalcy the new normal posing a challenge to every sphere of life and all the challenges are to be accepted and through the challenges we have to come to a newer term in the field of education covid-19 pandemic is a quintessential adaptive and transforming it has transformed us from nowhere to everywhere the pandemic has transformed the traditional teaching model into a technology driven model so nowadays we are using technology we are using all the online platforms which are available to us if i am connected from bilaspur chatisgarh with the people of tripura and other places it's because of the online platform which is available to each one of us and during this pandemic we are using webinar to a greater extent and before pandemic webinar was used only by few people but nowadays each and everyone is using webinar so we are technologically advancing very fast in this panic period the disruption in the delivery of uh, education is pushing educators to figure out how to ensure inclusive e learning solutions as well as to cope up with the apparent digital divide that exist so e learning has taken place everything has been transformed into e so everywhere you will find e learning e transformation and e connection everywhere it's going on so the immediate measure which need to be taken to ensure continuity of learning in every level of education is open source digital learning solutions like uh, e platforms what i talked about right now the e channels online learning through live classes recorded lectures e resources of learning materials online tests quizzes learning softwares all these should be adopted so that the process of learning doesn't stop even the schools colleges they started with webinars they started with video lectures they started with audio lectures they started with online platforms because all of them they do not want the education and the learning to be stopped so we must not stop education and a few points which are to ponder here is inclusive learning needs to be adopted e learning has to be encouraged project based learning should be included for assessment process innovative teaching practices have to be encouraged and adopted technology based learning and distance learning options have to be included in short what we can say is overall rethinking has to be done the mindset has to be changed the mindset has to be transformed transform the educational sector in order to meet the demands and needs of the post covid transformed world we are unable to understand what the post covid world would be in the near future so we have to prepare ourselves to fight with the adversities and that's why a beautiful quotation is there which says the study of humanities teaches one how to study and look at how the past developed and how it has created a profound impact on today's world it allows people of different cultures to come together so humanities brings so many cultures together coming together is a beginning keeping together is a progress and working together is a success this study is ongoing and continual ongoing and continual means working together and constantly involving and shaping we need our children we need our students to shape reshape we have to make them to learn unlearn and relearn so from young we were taught how to love but not how to stop so we must never stop the process of education the process of learning 
and when we will not stop then these are the things which are needed from human being to being human there is a long gap from human being to being human we all are born human beings but to convert the human being into being human we require these 10 qualities they are the manners how to behave with the people the moral values which we inculcate within the family within the system wherein we live we be able to respect each and everyone every creature everything in this world has to have a respect from us the character has to be a polished character common sense which has become most uncommon we have to make it common we have to trust the people if we don't trust people then take out tea it becomes only rust so we have to trust people patience has to be there empathy has to be there the class we have to become high class citizens integrity has to be there and above all love has to be there and if we develop all these 10 skills right from manner to love we can convert ourselves from human being to being human lord buddha has converted himself jesus christ has converted himself mahatma gandhi has converted himself so there are so many people those who have converted themselves from human being to being human we started calling them the god so let us make ourselves a kind of a leap from human being to being human and all these things can be learned only with the help of humanities and that's why from all the amenities whatever we have we have to move towards the humanities and if we move towards humanities then dalai lama says love and compassion are necessities not luxuries without them humanity cannot survive so love and compassion has to be the two watchwords for us even in this covid even after covid post covid period love and compassion should not go away from our world love and compassion is there then there is humanity if love and compassion is not there then there is no humanity only human beings are there so let us go and concentrate on humanities and to develop love and compassion and that's why there has to be a logical flow of content and learning activities with the strategies to enhance the students understanding and learning experience so for this we have to focus on the right thing at the right moment at the right place so all the things have has to be right in india we don't need right to education but what we need is right education is needed so if we are having the right education then the content has to be good the learning activities have to be according to the content and according to the content we have to develop the strategies and with the help of the strategies we can make the students to understand the strategies understand the content and they will have a wonderful learning experience all the syllabus even if you change the syllabus they'll become redundant in the hand of a teacher who is not active i do feel even the syllabus is redundant that doesn't matter what matters is a teacher the teacher within the four walls is not autonomous the teacher within the four wall is very creative the teacher within the four wall has all the skills and he can make even the redundant syllabus very creative one but if a teacher is not creative, he can make a wonderful syllabus into a redundant one. So everything depends on the learning experience. We have to understand the needs of the students. If we understand the needs of the students, then in this COVID period, what we can do is we can give them the remote projects. Encouragement should be given to the students to undertake remote projects, online work and internships this will not only give the learners practical experience but at the same time it will also provide opportunities to develop communication and leadership skills we have to make them the leaders leaders in the field of education leaders in the field of so many so many avenues are there for the students and for that they have to develop good communication skills e-courses must be introduced and they should be developed that will enable the learners to get extra credits by undertaking various certificate courses that will add to their portfolio and empower them with employable skills most of our students are unemployable 
because we haven't empowered them. We haven't made their portfolio a good portfolio. Their portfolio is not creative. Their portfolio is not having so many courses. So this time has given us to understand we can increase the portfolios of our students and even our portfolios. E-internship opportunities are to be given. Industries and the educational institutions should be roped in to need to collaborate more in order to provide on the job experience to the learners by providing e-internship opportunities. And this will not only wider the range of learners, but at the same time, it will enhance the scope to upgrade their skills and increase their employability quotient. So we have to update the students, we have to upgrade the students, and we have to uplift the students. So all the three ups are very necessary for each one of us. E-exchange programs could be done. E-exchange programs between the educational institutions as the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC, says there has to be an exchange program among the students, among the institutions. Now, sitting at home, we can have a very good exchange with various institutions. And it is to be developed that will provide the learners to get guidance and wider learning experience that can be accessed even by the students sitting at the remote areas. So this technology has given us wonderful opportunity to grow. And when we grow, then we can say our attitude is the only thing which, which can take us to the altitude. So attitude is altitude. Have a positive and strong attitude. Attitude is very important learners need to develop patience and a positive attitude this is a time when many are under a lot of tension and insecurity related to their education and future prospects one should keep their positivity intact and be busy in upgrading their skills through available e-learning opportunities the need of the hour is to be active and keep oneself oneself involved in constructive and creative activity i like I like this word skill very much. If you don't have skill, then the society kills. So skill, kill, ill. All the three things are there in the skill. The second one is join an online course. There are so many online courses which are available with the help of MOOC, with the help of Swayam platform. Learn a new skill. Consider the time in lockdown as an opportunity to learn something new or upgrade your skills. Join e-courses online, some of which are free and easily accessible. Participate in online quizzes and various e-learning activities being conducted. And it has been conducted by many institutions nowadays. So we must take part in all these activities, having a positive attitude towards everything. Extracurricular activities are to be developed. Develop a hobby. Get involved in extracurricular activities as they help not only in our holistic development, but at the same time, they add to our portfolio. We must get creative and learn a new activity or new creative skill. Once again, I like this uh, particular word, learn. If you don't learn, then you cannot earn. So if you take out L from learn, it's only earn. To earn, we have to learn first. So let us learn so many things. Every day, every time, we must learn some of the other things. Then prioritize health habits. Today is International Yoga Day. So during this pandemic, this personalizing or prioritizing healthy habits has redefined society's priorities in a big way. Health has emerged as the most important aspect of our life. And that's why we say in Hindi, Jaan hai to Jahan hai. If there is no Jaan, then there is no Jahan. So we have to concentrate on our health develop healthy food habits and develop an active lifestyle by incorporating some kind of physical activity like yoga for a holistic overall well-being so one has to take care of their health also which is very important take online tests prepare for competitive examinations by taking online tests mock tests preparatory modules for various examinations are available online that can be utilized for keeping oneself prepared and ready that's what we call updated, upgraded. And then only we can uplift ourselves. And if we can uplift ourselves, 
then what is very important is this transformational time has provided the much needed opportunity to evaluate and rethink of what education should entail. And what education entails is technology is a significant partner in the post COVID arena of education, but technology is just an aid. It's not going to replace the real classroom, but yes, nowadays the real to virtual has become virtually real. So we are in the world of virtually re real classrooms. It's a time to rethink of what more we can provide and facilitate apart from all the information we have been providing our students in the name of knowledge. We are here to share the knowledge. We are here to impart knowledge and more holistic education rooted in <clears throat> tradition and empowered by technology should be the key in ushering the much needed change in education. Every time education is changing, every time education is taking a leap from what it was not to what it is nowadays. So that's why we have to create an atmosphere, <coughs> atmosphere from aha to aha. If we create the atmosphere from aha to aha, from sadness, a pain to happiness, then there comes the nine events of instructions of Gagnes model. Gagnes model says, in the beginning, the teacher has to gain the attention of the learners. Then the teacher has to inform learning outcomes, LO. Even NAC asks, what are the program outcome, program specific outcome, course outcome. In the same way, there has to be a learning outcome and then stimulate recall of prior learning, flashback, then present information, provide the present information, then provide the guidance to the students, allow them to demonstrate the things. Now ask them to try for it, elicit performance, then provide feedback to them, then assess their performance, and that will enhance retention and transfer. Then these nine events, if we follow like this, this is known as Gagne's uh, instruction module in which a student from ah he'll move to aha. So from pain, he'll go to happiness. And that's what learning is all about. Learning has to create happiness. Learning has to create joy. Learning should not be pathetic. Learning should not create sad atmosphere. Learning should not discourage the students but learning should always encourage the students to empower them in a much better way encourage and empower that's the basic thing which is required so instead of just giving information which is based on the text we have to make them to understand we have to make them to understand the visual things by showing the visual not the text but the visual that will enhance and elevate them towards a better future so instructional design, what is known as ID, is about helping the learners to make sense of the information. We have to make them to understand the sense of the information. Once they start understanding the sense of the information, then the teacher has a very little role to play. He'll become the facilitator and the entire thing will go student centric. And there the humanities plays a vital role. A teacher who knows the humanities, a teacher who understands the students, a teacher who can even know the in and outs of the students can convert the atmosphere from what we call teacher center to the student center. And that's why we call humanities. Somebody has said we have mastered the air, we have conquered the sea, we have annihilated the distance and prolonged life but we are not wise enough to live on this earth without war and without hate. All knowledge leads to one particular place. So this world is full of war and hatred. Let us end this war. Let us end this hatred. Once we end this war and hatred with the help of humanities, wherein philosophy is there, religion is there, communication is there, sociology is there, language is there, environment we have to create, we have to bring all the cultures together, we have to bring ethics into the workplace, we have to make people to understand literature, we have to make them to understand sustainable kind of a living. That's what education is all about. So that's why long back Francis Bacon has said, 
reading make the full man conference a ready man writing an exact man so we have to make them to understand the art of writing art of reading so all these arts must be brought into the focus with the help of humanities and that's why gautam buddha has said what you think you become what you feel you attract what you imagine you create so let us be the creator we are the brahma to create we are the vishnu to sustain we are the mahesh or shiva to destroy so we are having all the powers not only to create not only to sustain but even to decay the things so whatever we think let us become first what we think then whatever we feel we definitely going to attract the students and whatever we imagine with the help of them we can create with them so let's bring all the students together let us bring a combined effort collaborative effort to emerge in a much better way with the help of technologies and with the help of humanities in the world of technology we have to recreate a new arena for humanities what humanities can do humanities provide insight into everything there is a site but it gives it provides insight into everything we tend to know the things we understand the things very well we understand the nuances of the things very well it will make us to know the in and outs of the thing at the same time it helps us to understand the world not only we have to understand the people but we have to understand the world around us and also to bring a basic change in the future so we have to all the time develop all these skills together engrossing all these skills together bringing them together and then elevating them towards the higher insight to everything what is insight to everything insight to everything says through exploration we learn how to think creatively to ask questions these skills allow us to gain new insights from poetry paintings to business models so poetry makes one to understand what imagination is all about what's going around how to imagine the things and how to make the things in an active way if we understand drama drama makes us to understand the communication skills how to speak how to use the voice modulation and all those things are there together with the help of humanity and that's what we call the insight to everything then understanding the, our world we go about our daily lives understanding almost nothing of the world all the time we are trying to understand people we are trying to understand the world but we are unable to understand there we require the empathetic attitude once we understand the empathetic attitude once we go into the once we surrender ourselves to empathetic attitude i think we can convert ourselves from human being to being human and what grace stewart has said long back there is heaven when one goes out of one's neighbor and hell when one turns back to himself hell is the state of being without affectionate relationship one may go through circle after circle of dates inferno down and down and although there are always crowds there is no relationship we need to develop relationships nowadays people say social distancing is important we cannot distance ourselves from the society but yes physical distancing could be managed but not social distancing right we have to have physical distance in this corona period but social distancing is not possible one should not go to oneself but one should be able to meet people interact with people call the people whom you haven't called for years together call them develop a kind of uh, human elements within ourselves even with the help of virtual classroom even with the help of our communication skills with the help of soft skills we can make the students to understand the world in a much better way we can teach them all the soft skills which are hard to learn with the help of technology so using technology using humanities collaborated with technology will give a new insight to education and that's what is required from each one of us in period in this covid period 
we all say all our actions speak louder yes our actions speaks louder when we speak the act when the actions start speaking louder i think then there is a need to understand the human elements until and unless we understand the human elements then we cannot call ourselves that we are turning from human being to being human bring the human insight into ourselves and if we develop ourselves in that way then that's going to propagate among our students then the students could be uplifted they could be upgraded and they could even be taken to a greater level so all the time i mean relationship is nothing but reelation enjoying the reelation in a ship is called relationship so let us develop a kind of a ship wherein elation is there and reelation has to be there this covid even after post covid let all of us come together all of us sit together all of us talk to each other and coming together as i said is a beginning keeping together is a progress and working together is a success somebody has said long back there is nothing worst in the world as the end of hope keep the hope intact keep on hoping for good things and all the good things will come to us in a very wonderful way and that's what ronda brian has written in the secret if you start feeling something if you start visualizing something and entire nature will help you to visualize all those things and whatever you have visualized all those things will come to you so we have to surrender ourselves to the nature and nature is the best preacher nature is the best guide get into nature you will understand the humanities and that's what we have to move from amenities to humanities thank you very much thank you very much sir for your very wonderful presentation in fact i would call it a very uh, very wonderful deliberation on understanding how amenities could be you know transformed to humanities as well as we could have a journey from pan pandemic to pan academic so there is no one who has a way with words like you sir that i have uh, experienced before also and i must tell you that the way you have elaborated on your topic is something that i could never imagine to be so illustrative to be so uh, in, to be so delightful because sir uh, the topic itself seems to be very philosophical of course and it seems to be something that any simple person would not be able to comprehend sir thank you very much for your deliberation and now thank you, thank you very much it's an honor and thank you very much for inviting me and giving me a chance to interact and also to present my views on this particular topic thanks a lot priya thank you sir it is in fact our pleasure and our uh, privilege to have you as our resource person for today's webinar we would look forward to some more associations in the future sir please yes, thank you stay for some for the rest of the session sir yeah i'll be here and we would also like to uh, take some questions or some uh, some interaction would also be uh, appreciated if uh, there are some at the end yes, yes. of the webinar of at the end yes. of this webinar so please please stay tuned sir uh, now i would like to request our principal madam dr rita das nayar to please address the webinar good afternoon patriot can you hear me yes ma'am okay. actually today we have got a golden opportunity to hear dr g a ganeshyam professor of english department as well as OST Director of Higher Education, Raipur, Chhattisgarh. First, I heartily welcome you, sir, to our webinar with your presentation. Actually, you, it's, a so, it's a so mesmerizing uh, presentation. And when I, while I, I am uh, hearing your lecture, the vision of this college 
which is to inculcate the growth of individuality to personality. I remember that it is exactly with our college motto. So it's a nice presentation. And today we are amidst the threat of global health by the disease named COVID-19. It has commanded everyone's attention right now and holds nation in thrall. Among the global pandemic situation, actually, students across the nation have been forced out of their institution and are learning from home. This has left many educators scrambling to determine how best to bridge the learning divide and meet the challenges of continuing the students. We have the good opportunity to hear you, and this has provided an opportunity for reflection and practice. Faculties of English department, I owe, I feel gratitude to them that they have arranged and they have come forward to organize a webinar on dissecting English. We are more than 20 years into 21st century. Building a strong community is the first priority needed when transforming a learning culture. The information age has transformed and has created new opportunities for how we communicate who will communicate? The answer is man. And which man? He who leaves mind and has capacity to deal with the world from a point of view that man is truly man. When the little self goes and a larger and fuller self comes into being within us, then only the essence of humanity spreads. And today you have given us that opportunity that what is humanity and from amenity how we will reach to the humanity and when we dwell in humanity we become revitalized this i think it is very pertinent for today and so i heartily again welcome you and your presentation i hope that will widely open the horizon of students knowledge and communication is essentially the exchange and flow of information and ideas from one end to another no matter how accomplished one is, but ineffective communication can be a big hindrance in life. So we have we were, we were showered with your presentation. And today we have also another presentation by Mr. Avijay Bhattacharya, Faculty, College of Fisheries, Central Agriculture University, Tripura. I also welcome him on this platform for the presentation of public presentation system, which is a powerful attribute in our life. I welcome all the stakeholders also and the faculties of other colleges uh, to hear uh, very good presentations from sir from very far away he is enriching us so again i welcome you sir and thank you i hope that uh, next time you will be here and when we call you definitely you must be uh, there and you must be must be must lend your hand to cooperate with us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Thank you Patriot. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your address. And uh, now I would like to request uh, Dr. Samir Kumar Diawa, the uh, all, sorry, the secretary to the Teachers Council of Netaji Subhash Mahavidyalay, to please kindly share a few words with us. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, or, I'm audible. Yes, sir. You are. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good afternoon to all. On behalf of the uh, Netaji Subhash Mahavidyalaya, I welcome you all the participants and especially our uh, today's speaker, uh, Ghansham Sah uh, and you, sir. Uh, Mr. Abhijit Bhattacharji. Actually, really, Ghansham Sah, since I'm from philosophy department, so actually your lecture, I, I found it's a bit uh, more philosophical than this uh, your <laughs> English. So really you have, uh, you have highlighted some points that uh, how we should journey from human being to being human and that lots to uh, shifting horse. to lots to uh, uh, hearts. So really there are certain things uh, also that know thyself. So unless and until we know ourselves, then it's difficult to know thyself. So that, that is also a bit uh, philosophical. And, and lots, of, lots of concepts which you are actually now is uh, very 
pertinent to this present scenario, COVID scenario for our students. I think our students uh, and your, uh, also your speaking, uh, Pointing, uh, that pointing those issues which we should uh, as faculty we should develop also and for students we should be more uh, more more innovative in in our, in our uh, thinking process and our teaching process so we should take it as, as opportunity since this webinar also is a, uh, is a uh, the, the, the beginning of our college so i think our students and our faculty members will be enriched by your uh, this motivational speaker and we have also another speaker uh, from Tripura, Mr. Abhijit Bhattacharji. He's also uh, earlier uh, worked in ICFI and also in um, Tripura University. Now he's presently working in uh, uh, this uh, language instructor in College of Fisheries. So I, I am not uh, speaking more. So we will be very uh, interested and very enlightened to speak the second speaker. So thanks to the English department, Patrick Madam and their team. And uh, last but not the least, our principal madam for encouraging us to have such a uh, webinar. So I think our, our faculty members, all the faculty members of N NSM family, they will be enriched by the seminar and they will take moti get motivation to proceed uh, for such type of webinars in the future. Thank you all. I, now I am giving, uh, over to Patrick, madam. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. And your encouraging words are always an inspiration to all the teachers, as well as uh, the students in the college. It was your support that really helped the organizing committee to, you know, to move forward in materializing this webinar. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I would like to request and invite our next speaker, uh, Sri Abhijit Bhattacharji, to deliberate on who is care of the microphone. Well, this is such a such an intriguing, uh, as well as very uh, surprising, as well as very interesting topic. Definitely targeted towards our students, our student participants. And this webinar itself was initiated as a means to reach out to the students, participants. And so we are very much privileged by the presence of many academicians, research scholars among us. But this session is definitely going to address all the issues regarding soft skills, regarding communication skills that will be faced by all the future entrepreneurs among our students, our future teachers, our future educators. And therefore, I would like to request uh, Abhijit Bhattacharji, who is at present the language instructor of College of Fisheries, to please be ready with his deliberations before I Hand over the mic to you. I would like to give a brief introduction about our resource person, Mr. Abhijit Bhattacharji. Abhijit Bhattacharji is a net and set qualified PhD student at Tripura University, and he is at present teaching in the College of Fisheries. And he has published academic with both creative and academic publications. He has worked previously in more than four academic institutions, including Tripura University and the ICFI. And at present, he teaches literature to students of the Faculty of Liber Liberal Arts and Communication, English and Soft Skills. And he's also teaching research-oriented English and communicative English to undergraduate and postgraduate students of all semesters apart from performing other academic duties pertaining to the linguistic needs of the project in College of Fisheries. Now, I would like to hand over this time to Sri Abhijit Bhattacharji. Please. 
So thank you, ma'am. Uh, at first, I would like to ask uh, if you can hear me. Am I audible? Yes, you are very much. Yeah, you are audible. Thank you. Well, uh, good afternoon, respected principal in charge, Netaji Shubhash Mahavidyalaya, Udaipur, Dr. Nayak, ma'am, assistant professor and the organizing secretary of today's webinar, Mrs. Patria Debrama, ma'am, respected speaker, Dr. Ghanashyam, sir, Dr. Diabag, uh, secretary to the Teachers Council for his uh, wonderful address, learned faculty members of the department, teachers, dear students, and other participants. I thank the organizing committee and the college for their kind invitation uh, to deliver this lecture. I was told that uh, I would be addressing both teachers and students in the audience in today's talk. I hope the respected teachers and other academics would kindly permit me the license to address primarily the students while I speak um, in order to be able to reach out to them intimately. I must add here that the full module on effective presentation skills, which I take, usually takes six lectures. However, for today's talk, I have chosen select concepts and areas that I felt the undergraduate and postgraduate students would find most resourceful. I particularly chose this topic for today's lecture because I felt students more than ever require skills to survive academically in these trying and testing times. Communication skills, as the previous speaker has also pointed out on uh, multiple occasions, have never been more important than now. Mainstream academic scholarship can always wait for a little while, can't it? Uh, please give me a moment as I switch over to the uh, presentation. Could you please confirm if, if these slides are visible? Is this slide? Yes, uh, visible. yes it is visible. It is. Right. Thank you. So let me begin today's talk or discussion with a few questions. How many of you are scared of speaking in public in front of a large audience of say 50, 60, maybe 100 people? How many of you start getting anxious with a pounding heart and begin to sweat before your turn comes to go up on the stage? Who all are scared of having to listen to their own amplified voice echo in a big hall when you speak on the microphone? And finally, how many of you have forgotten lines in the middle of a speech presentation and felt embarrassed at that moment and traumatized later? Well, uh, I must beg forgiveness for attempting such a sorry introduction, but I assure you my intentions are just the opposite. These questions actually do not require answers. We have all been familiar with these situations. Well, I'm sure these situations cover almost all the students. I'm sure that nearly all of you have gone through one situation or the other uh, among the ones I mentioned while speaking in public. The harsh reality is most students have developed a long-standing phobia for public speaking. And uh, I don't blame you. You know what the problem is? Please allow me to be frank and completely honest with you. Public speaking is like driving a car and someone forcibly put you in the driver's seat and expects you to navigate the car astutely through the traffic to some unknown destination. Further, you don't, you don't even have a driving license. I don't think it will be an exaggeration to say that public speaking and presentation is today the most important and sought after life skill that no one ever really teaches us. Yet, we're all expected to become great public communicators and presenters. Well, sure, like in the old days, our fathers and our teachers expect us to learn it gradually through adaptation, practice, and exposure in time. There's nothing wrong with this uh, very natural uh, process of learning. But the problem is, public speaking is no longer just an art these days but a fully blown employability skill. Uh, I'm sure you've been hearing this rather fancy term often in the last few years, employability skill. Adapt or perish. 
learn to speak in public or be forgotten learn to take online classes or will be replaced by robots <laughs> well uh, unfortunately that is the world we are living in our talents and knowledge have become secondary traits to our ability to communicate it so um, in today's discussion given the limitations of time i would like to touch on a set of basic public presentation skills that might just transform the way you think about it at least uh, that is what i'm hoping to achieve from this uh, discussion today let me walk you through the lecture to follow i will talk briefly about the structure of a presentation i will suggest strategies of opening or uh, what we call the bridge of a presentation i will talk briefly about the preparation of powerpoint slides and stylistics finally i will introduce you to the very magical idea of a transcript and how to effectively employ it my purpose today is to discuss strategies to make public presentations effective entertaining focused and most importantly burden and anxiety free for the students especially something that um, you know you'd rather enjoy doing another thing is i have framed today's lecture as a presentation itself please observe how i use certain strategies to navigate through the rough waters of presentation communications we can begin with a greeting good afternoon everyone my name is uh, abhijit bhattacharji i would like to begin today's presentation with a short video on presentation skills before i move on to the main part of the presentation i feel that it is important that all of us look at public presentation with a fresh mind without any pre given idea hope you all enjoy the video there are two sides to every presentation you are speaking when an audience is listening if you want to give a great presentation you need to know about people the more you understand how people think and learn hear see react decide the better able you will be to put together a presentation that informs inspires and motivates so here are five things that great presenters know about people number 1 people learn best in 20 minute chunks when i'm coaching and mentoring people on presentations i tell them to go watch ted talks If you aren't familiar with TED Talks, you should check it out at ted.com. These are short talks by accomplished people in their fields. And interestingly, most TED Talks are 20 minutes long. I think that's one reason they're so effective. These same presentations stretched out to an hour might not be so brilliant. Maureen Murphy tested the idea that 20-minute presentations are the right amount of time. She had adults attend a 60-minute presentation and the same presentation broken up into 20 minute chunks she wanted to see if there would be a difference in people's memory of the talk and also their reaction to the talk when the presentation was chunked into 20 minute segments people enjoyed the presentation more they learned more and they retained the information longer most of us give presentations that are often longer than 20 minutes. So if you have a presentation that's longer, see if you can build in some kind of change every 20 minutes. Maybe take a break, a short stretch break, uh, or have an activity or an exercise. Number 2, multiple sensory channels compete. During a presentation, there are two sensory channels that are the most active, visual and auditory. Your audience is looking at you and listening to you they're also possibly looking at slides you're showing if the slides are visuals that are easy to understand like photos or diagrams that add extra context and meaning then having these multiple channels audio and visual are a positive experience for the audience but if the slides are hard to read if they're complicated if there's a lot of text on them then the visual channel is going to be distracting the visual channel trumps auditory we are very visual creatures so if you have complicated information for people to read or look at then they're not going to be listening to you anymore 
So in particular, the sensory combination of slides that are filled with text and a speaker who is talking is just a bad combination. As soon as people are reading, they're not listening to you. You don't have to use slides in a presentation. Try putting your presentation together without any slides first and then decide if any of your points would be enhanced by the use of a visual example or illustration. You know what I call slides with a lot of text on them? Your notes. If you feel you need slides with text, it's probably because you feel you need notes, but you don't have to show the audience your notes. Number three, what you say is only part of your message. The research in psychology over the last 15 years has revealed that people process information unconsciously and make very quick, like one second or less, unconscious decisions about other people. People react to not only your message, but your voice, your stance, your facial expressions, and your hand movements. There's a special field of study called paralinguistics, which studies how information is communicated besides the words that you say. For instance, I can say, I'd love to go to the store with you. Or I can say, I'd love to go to the store with you. In either case, I've said exactly the same words, but the paralinguistics of the message is totally different. You wanna think about how you are saying what you're saying, not just the words. One of the best things that you can do is record a video of yourself giving a presentation, either a real one or, or just record a practice and take a look at it and see what your body language and listen for what your paralinguistics are saying. Number four, if you want people to act, you have to call them to action. Recently, I attended a fundraiser. The speaker got up and gave a pretty good speech. I think he could have used a speech coach, but at the end, he didn't have a call to action. He was trying to raise funds, but he didn't ask for the money at the end of the presentation. There were people walking around after the presentation with jars so you could donate, but no one had actually asked for the money. At the end of your presentation, be very specific about exactly what you want your audience to do. Number five, people imitate your emotions and feel your feelings. People imitate what they see. If you are smiling, they tend to smile. If you're energetic, they'll be energetic. When you are passionate about your topic, your audience will be passionate. People like to watch and listen to someone who's animated and excited about what they're talking about. If your topic gets you excited, don't hold back. Show how you feel. That feeling will be contagious. So there you have it. Five things you need to know about people in order to give a better presentation. If you're interested in more ideas like this, check out my book, 100 Things Every Presenter Needs to Know About People. Well, uh, I'm sorry for the extra noise here. It's raining here. So anyway, let me just sum up what the lady uh, mentioned in the video. The first element is time. Before lunch, people are hungry. And after, well, uh, they're sleepy. You should never take the audience's attention for granted. That would be your hamartia or the fatal, a fatal flaw. If it's a longer presentation, you could break it into parts or include interesting photos or videos to balance the cognitive load of the audience. You can um, also take a sip of water in the meantime. And then uh, we can ask this very important question. The answer would be yes, most definitely. Structure is important because a well-organized presentation creates the impression that you know what you're talking about. You will gain the audience's trust and they will be more likely to listen to you. A structure provides a logical flow so that you can provide the information that the audience needs in order to follow your presentation. Also, the structure will help you Uh, can you see me? There has been a uh, power cut here. Uh, now it's okay again. It's okay again. Okay, sorry. There has been a power cut. I needed to shift from. Yeah. 
Okay, so a structure provides a logical flow that um, so that you can provide the information that the audience needs in order to follow your presentation. Also, the structure will help you become more comfortable yourself following the flow. Uh, for example, you can create a structure by breaking the presentation into smaller parts, like um, an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. As a speaker, you must know what exactly is your purpose of presenting any topic. You can call it the outcome, goal, whatever. To determine your purpose, ask what are the main points I want my audience to take away from my presentation today? This provides focus for you and the audience is clear on what exactly they will gain listening to, you, to uh, your presentation. As in my case today, I began by stating my purpose at the very beginning, if you remember. It is important to repeat the purpose throughout the presentation so that the audience does not lose focus and you stay on track as well. Further, repeat the purpose at the end again while concluding the presentation, thus completing a full cycle. It is important to identify the characteristics, level of knowledge and needs of your audience so that you're delivering the right presentation to the right audience. Know who your audience is, what they want, need to know, and what is their background. This step is done before the presentation or throughout. Uh, for example, I personally sometimes spend weeks on preparations when I teach a new batch of students uh, or maybe students from another discipline. Uh, when I joined the College of Fisheries, I had to spend a lot of time, uh, almost two weeks, um, in trying to teach myself the basic terminologies of uh, fishery sciences, because obviously I was going to teach them about research and I could, just, I could not just enter the classroom with uh, examples from literature. So I familiarized myself with the very basic uh, principles of fishery sciences. And now whenever I go to their class, I, I can throw around some concepts and they understand that this person is somebody who knows us, knows our discipline. Uh, not to a great extent, but at least he's uh, curious about it. So, you know, you have to tailor your uh, presentation suiting what kind of audience you're presenting it to. It could be an interview where you present uh, to the panel. It could be a seminar where there's a mixed audience, things are less formal. You could be presenting in a forum or a meeting where things are very casual. Uh, no matter the place, your presentation has to be um, suited to the right audience. Uh, obviously, this is ex this is not the presentation that I present to my students in fishery sciences. I changed it to suit today's audience, which is the undergraduate students. Um, as I told you at the beginning, I, it usually takes me five to six uh, lectures. So I obviously compressed things. I simplified certain ideas that uh, the undergraduate students might find difficult to understand or uh, ideas that are not relevant. So this is something that uh, one we must keep in mind where, uh, while preparing for uh, any presentation. So coming to the central part of our discussion, opening a presentation is usually the toughest and the most important part of your talk. But as they say, well begun is half done. There is a study that said that it takes exactly three seconds for someone to form an opinion of us. People basically judge us from the second, from the very second that they see us, often even before we open our mouths. So a good opening sets the tone of the presentation and the audience is hooked. Uh, you know, uh, hooked is a technical soft skills term. It is designed to grab the audience's attention and provide them with a reason to be interested in your presentation. Uh, you need not be afraid there are a lot of strategies we can readily use. Practicing them will make it better. For example, if you noticed, I began today's lecture with questions. Why did I do that? I did that to share my purpose so that you know what you have to take away from my discussion today. Also, I wanted to let you feel that I, the speaker, am no stranger to presentation anxiety and I completely understand how you feel. So you see, a good introduction can gain the audience, uh, gain the trust of the audience, and make the um, you know introduction very compelling. We can use any of these strategies uh, to make the presentation attention-grabbing. 
uh, a second. Yeah. This strategy is useful for introducing topics that deal with difficult concepts, jargons, etc. Let me demonstrate it for you instead of uh, giving, I um, you know, instead of being theoretical about it. Good afternoon to all. My name is uh, Mr. X. I would like to begin today's presentation by defining climate change first before moving on with further discussion. It refers to the gradual and swift transformation taking place at many geological levels affecting both plant and animal life for reasons both in and beyond human control, right? So this strategy is very um, effective to introduce ideas that you feel the audience might not be familiar about, right? Uh, if you are in a specialized field, but you're presenting um, you know, in front of an audience which is neutral or general, you can always start with this method, the definition method. Um, this strategy works very well when uh, you have something fascinating to share, there's a backstory to it. Again, let me demonstrate it instead of being theoretical about it. Good afternoon, students. My name is Mr. Y. I would like to begin today's presentation with a story. I saw a video on Facebook the other day where a teacher invited parents in a play school to paint something using crayons from a box. But there was a condition. Whatever crayons they chose cannot be put back into the box again. And the next batch will paint using whatever crayons would be left. So the parents had a lot of fun and drew a lot of colorful, colorful pictures. Then came the children. Left with only black and white unused crayons from the box, they painted sceneries and people and trees and cars, but all in black. The parents had used all the colorful crayons. Only the black crowns were left unused. We are the parents. We are using up all the colors of this world. Our children are facing a black future. With this little story, I would like to introduce uh, my topic of uh, presentation today, climate change. So you see, it works wonderfully when you have a backstory to it. Um, you can always begin with questions uh, like I did today in today's presentation. To again demonstrate it, we can say something like, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to begin the presentation with some questions for the audience. Who's in charge of preserving the earth? Our leaders, we, the scientists, researchers, corporate people, industrialists. Isn't it absurd to get into this blame game? The fact is our earth is getting warmer. We don't have time. With these questions that I throw at the audience, I would like to begin today's presentation on climate change. You see, so the, this strategy is very effective for um, critical ideas, provocative thoughts, things that require audiences' feedback, et cetera, right? Um, these are very open sort of strategies. You can uh, always uh, you know, tweak them to your purpose, right? This strategy is uh, something that is very effective for um, you know, introducing critical ideas, things that are very critical and things that require a lot of provocation to the audience. Let me demonstrate for you. Good morning to all. I welcome everyone to my talk on climate change. I would like to begin today's presentation with some facts. There's a recent study that said that we might not have books anymore in 10 years. Zero physical book production by 2032. Can you imagine? No more books. Sorry to break the news, fellow readers. The reason is producing one book consumes two kilowatt hours of fossil fuels and approximately 7.5 kilograms of carbon dioxide. Books do not go easy on the environment. The newspaper and book publishing industries consume 150 gallons a billion gallons of water each year. Producing ink for printing releases volatile organic compounds into the atmosphere, which can aggravate smog and asthma. Publishers may soon shift to e-books as the preferred format. Some have already jumped the ship. Digital literature has kicked off in a big way as well. You see, so this uh, might work wonderfully for topics that 
are uh, you know provocative or need some critical um, thinking okay am i audible uh, yes yes you are audible okay. sorry to ask again and again because without audience feedback it's very you know uh, i start getting anxious no, no it's quite interesting <laughs> please carry on yeah because uh, the the power cut is uh, happening anyway so okay. this is the major portion of the presentation it is necessary that it connects directly to your purpose or the bridge uh, please cover enough points to achieve your purpose no more and be sure to support your points clearly and concisely often what happens is uh, people shove in a lot of information in the body of a presentation so what happens is the audience loses track of the um, you know the purpose right so the the very purpose of a presentation is to clarify not to you know sort of go about expounding uh, something so this is the final impression that you will leave with your audience please make sure it is a strong one please connect back to your purpose and let them know where you have been leave your audience with a clear understanding of your points you can conclude with this right you can end the presentation with a call to action urging the audience to do something about the presentation uh, most times i see people ending the presentation just like that once once they're done talking they just stop it and they uh, you know seek um and they seek feedback from the audience on you know the q and a session so what happens in that case is uh, the audience loses grounding the audience forgets what exactly was the purpose so it's very important that the presentation completes one full cycle wherever you're beginning the presentation must end there right to keep it uh, compact so you can always end a presentation with a call to action for example you can say something like with this i wrap i i wrap up my presentation today i would like to briefly mention the points discussed today i urge everyone to think about the ideas discussed to make the earth uh, a better place and to practice eco friendly habits in our everyday life questions and suggestions are welcome thank you right so what it does is it immediately connects the lecture back to the purpose right if you are in a formal setting you could say i now invite questions from the audience for a discussion on my presentation feedback is always welcome but uh, it's always advisable that you always revise the points that uh, you know you have covered so far now while preparing slides there are some very interesting formulas to keep in mind while um, you know preparing them let's look at some of them this gentleman guy kawasaki was the person who marketed the original macintosh computers in 1984 for apple incorporation he is a brilliant marketing specialist and an excellent speaker um by having a limit of 10 slides you will be managing the cognitive load for your audience they can easily follow the flow of your presentations it also challenges you to design your presentations well choose what's important and leave out what's unnecessary uh, if you have noticed that i have tried to adhere to these rules that i'm you know preaching in my presentation today i've tried to keep it minimal and uh, you know i'm trying to um, follow what mr kawasaki has said but by giving yourself limited time on your presentation you are challenging yourself to leave out unnecessary details and focus on the important stories that will convey your message even if your session has been allotted with more time you can devote the remaining minutes um to show a video or uh, to show some photographs um you can go for a discussion feedback from the audience questions or any technique that involves audience interaction with your presentation etc right but um, yes in some cases you have to speak for longer duration for one hour say for example then what you can do is you can break the presentation into parts we can make it 20 into 3 in that case uh, you can always bridge the um, you know bridge each, each part of the presentation with a video or with some photographs that will keep the audience uh, patient depending on the room and screen size most audiences will be able to see text that are at least 30 size font when designing your presentation please keep in mind 
that anything you show must be visible to everyone in attendance, especially those at the back. Sometimes we forget it. Um, if you are concerned about fitting more text in a slide, always remember they do not necessarily make a better presentation. Another rule to keep in mind to make the presentation crisp is this rule. I have tried to follow it. Uh, let us look at some sample texts. Look at this slide. Would you say that this is a good slide? Why? Why not? Well, uh, the problem with this slide is that it creates an audio visual conflict. The audience is confused whether to listen to you or focus on these slides. And as you saw in the video, um, the speaker mentioned that the visual always triumphs the audio. If you have a lot of you know, text on the screen, they most probably are not going to listen to you. They will try to read what's there on the slides. So the audience is confused whether to listen to you or focus on these slides. Also, it defeats the purpose of a presentation, which is to clarify and bring focus. Instead, it can go for something like this, right? This slide has six points and less than six words in each line. That's the name six by six slides. Uh, sorry, the six by six formula. This is the ideal slide according to this rule. Don't forget about audio visual coordination. Now you may ask, why haven't I kept the uh, you know PowerPoint such minimalist? Sorry, or why have I kept the uh, PowerPoint such minimalist? Well, the answer is, why else would you even listen to me if everything were there on the screen? It would be confusing, and there would be a conflict between the slides uh, or the visual and my voice, the audio. So please never ever clog your slides with too much information. Keep them neat and clean while you talk and create a wonderful audiovisual balance. Also, please remember that these slides are only to bring focus. The real information is in what you say. Enough of rules. Now let us look at some stylistic features to emphasize content in a slide. These elements can add a lot of wow factor to your presentation if done well. You can use design elements that are clearly different to draw viewers' attention. For example, near, far, empty, filled, dark, light, serif, sun serif. Here's an example for you. Right, so the audience doesn't have to expend a lot of energy. The audience will just look at the slides and it's clear what you're trying to do, right? It's a kind of visual way of interacting with the audience instead of cognitive, right? Um, pros on the left side, cons on the other side with different font and uh, different um, you know, typography. It works like a charm. Another example, one side dark, another side bright for pros and cons or vice versa. As you can see, white space allows for a focus or an appreciation of central elements in a slide. Uh, if you go back to my slide, you'll see that I've tried to stick to this uh, approach. I've tried to prioritize centering my um, content, right? So that the focus goes directly to, to the content. Okay. You can also consider subtly repeating a common design element in order to make the visual more unified. For example, you could repeat slide background, consistent use of font, etc. In case you haven't noticed, I used a blue gradient every time I introduced a new concept. Um, actually, it's not showing in this uh, presentation because of Google uh, Meet, but I had this uh, slide in blue. So if, I, if it were there, you would notice it. I'm really sorry for that. Uh, mishap. Okay. So things to remember from the discussion, as I said, we need to connect back to the um, purpose. You need a good preparation. You have to know your audience and you have to have a transcript. Now, what is a transcript? I'll come to that in a while. The introduction has to be very catchy. It has to suit the topic. You can use any of these strategies I previously mentioned in the uh, introduction. You have to have a great structure 
that the audience can follow. There has to be a clarity of clarity and economy of words in the slides. There has to be audio visual, visual coordination. Um, one very important point that I missed mentioning uh, before is, you know, the audience sort of uh, feels the way you feel when you speak. If you're, you know, feeling passionate, it's, uh, you know, obvious that the audience will translate that passion into themselves, right? So if you feel like, um, you know, eliciting the emotions of passion in the audience or anger or any other sort of emotion, you have to embody that. So passion and enthusiasm are contagious and, um, you know, through some voice modulation, through some practice, you can always achieve that, right? So that your uh, medium becomes the message. Stylistic elements that I've covered, it, these are effective additions to the content. Your uh, presentation doesn't have to be very high flying and very sophisticated. It just has to be minimalist, focusing on the content. Uh, you have to end with a revision followed by uh, sort of a call to action or sort of a refocusing. Right, so a transcript is nothing but a written form of your speech. A well-prepared transcript does away with the need for remembering everything and allows you more freedom and focus on your presentation. Now, this is where the anxiety lies on the part of the uh, presenter, right? We're all afraid that what if we forget a line? What if uh, we're giving a speech in front of 100 people and uh, we just forget something? It, it, has all, it, it, it has happened to all of us. We have gone through a lot of uh, you know, embarrassment, anxiety, trauma, whatever you call it. So there are certain strategies to do away with that sort of an accident. Uh, a well-prepared transcript does away with the need of remembering everything and allows you more freedom and focus on your presentation. Plus, it also takes away the anxiety and the nervousness. With a transcript, you can't really mess anything up if you, you know, if I'm allowed to say it like that, because if you forget anything, it will be written down on the page. Let me show you. If you remember this slide that I showed at the uh, very beginning, this is the transcript. Aside every slide, you can create another slide that sort of sums up what you're going to say. If you're very confident, you can go for points. If you're not very confident, you want uh, the full text, you can just type it out in the first stages. And mind you, this is not for the audience. This is for you. The audience is not going to see this. This is uh, something that you will, you will be printing out and you will have it at the dais. So even if you forget something, no problem. You can always read from the transcript. Another example, a uh, lot of points, easy to forget while presenting it, no problem. You have it written down, right? So this strategy works like a charm, the transcript strategy. I feel everyone should have it. Even teachers have it in class but they're, they're, they're experts, so they don't have to look at it every time, but uh, they have it nevertheless. So this is what I mean by the transcript. It's a wonderful strategy of uh, structuring the presentation and to stay confident. You can always record your own lecture with the transcript and see how it goes. Okay, so uh, I would like to end my deliberation today with an anecdote. My supervisor shared it with me moments before my first ever interview to motivate me right after I had completed my post-graduation. Um, please bear with me, it's a, a bit long. A 17 year old boy, Wanda, played his first one day international match against Sri Lanka in 1991 in the Asia Cup final in what was to be his first match at the Eden Gardens, Kolkata, popularly known as the Mecca of Indian cricket. They were chasing and they were two down in 30 runs. The Eden crowd is merciless. The sounds reverberating in a pressure cooker of a stadium. Expectations were high and losing was not an option. It was the young boy's turn. The crowd bellowed and thundered in anticipation and tension, thirsting for blood in the form of runs from the little boy. Any ordinary mortal would have crumbled under the pressure and gone weak in his knees. But not this boy. 
he walked up to the pitch pitch uh, as the deafening sounds enveloped him he played and added 53 runs to the total and the sound faded away the pressure eased azaruddin came out next after the boy and won the match easily an interviewer asked this boy at the end of the game if he was nervous and scared when his turn came to bat at the Eden Gardens. The boy replied, I just enjoyed the game. No prizes for guessing who this young boy was. According to you know many, he is the great, greatest cricketer to have ever played the game. So the trick to performing well is to be in the moment and enjoy whatever you do. As the uh, previous speaker, Dr. Ghansham, also stressed on, to not to uh, grow anxious, to not be nervous, but to be in the moment and enjoy whatever we do, to not reel under pressure or overthink. With this, I end today's uh, discussion. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abhijit, for your Thank you, very informative and highly engaging and interesting presentation. Of course, I would call it a deliberation because to many of us today, we learned new ways of presenting ourselves through our ideas in the form of a presentation. Well, I hope uh, our participants had been really enlightened by your presentation. And uh, as far as the chat box goes, I have not found any single question yet on our uh, two deliberations given by our resource persons. However, I like the chat box question, is actually. With, I would like you know, question. I, I'm sure that the students have a lot of doubts. And this okay. is something they never taught. So I would yes, be, definitely. Uh, Actually, uh, as you had mentioned about your PhD supervisor or your professor in the university, I must acknowledge the presence of uh, Professor Parthasharathi sir amongst us, who is also my teacher, as I'm also a research scholar of the university. Uh, if there are no questions that would be coming uh, from the participants, we would definitely take uh, any kind of suggestions or any kind of uh, views or any kind of uh, sharing that you'd want to get involved in through this webinar. And uh, before that, I would like to give this time to our principal madam, Dr. Rita Das Nair, to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Abhijit. Uh, Thanks, ma'am. It's a very, very good presentation. Actually, communication skill is an essential attribute in our present day life. And uh, I think it develops a harmony between a uh, demonstrator or uh, presenter to the audience. And then a music forms. Uh, so it's a real orchestration. And it's a real need for the hour for the present students who will enter into the uh, field. Uh, to join the job or anything else and nowadays it is uh, first and foremost thing to uh, present yourself to the outside world and how to present how to develop communication skill and what to present uh, and this is the thing uh, which has to be maintained has to be uh, this is the essential need of the hour so thank you so much uh, that uh, we have uh, very fortunate uh, for having with us and uh, I owe my uh, gratitude to the English department that uh, they have uh, collected the personalities uh, like you and sir and so again I thank you so much to you. Thank you Patriot. Thank you ma'am for your kind invitation. Well, now I would like to uh, get any kind of questions uh, from the participants towards our resource persons. 
If there are any questions to be addressed towards our resource persons, I would like to welcome that in our chat box, or you could even verbally pronounce your own questions by unmuting yourself. Uh, I'm requesting all the participants to put forward your questions or your queries to the resource persons. Or if anyone would like to express your ideas or your views on this platform, you are much welcome to do that. Uh, good afternoon, Madam. Madam Patriot. Uh, Good yeah, this is yeah, I have a very uh, small yes. addition to that of what uh, our my senior Ojitha has told recently. Uh, I believe that uh, he must have left one a uh, very important point of having uh, a good presenter or, or a better communicator. That is the that is the importance of vocabulary. I just want to know his opinion on uh, you know, the importance of vocabulary. Um, in the participation of, of any presentation. Thank you. This is what I had to say for now. I want uh, Ovijit to take on this. Well, uh, thank you for your question, Shushanto. It's a very pertinent question, I feel. Um, although it was not um, in the scope of today's um, presentation today, but yes, vocabulary is uh, obviously very important. Without words, we can't speak. We need words. But uh, the unfortunate fact remains that not everyone is blessed with a very vast vocabulary. So that is why uh, you know I stressed on the you know use of the transcript because uh, for some disciplines, I'm sure that there are students and teachers from other disciplines as well who are not from English who use English to communicate rather than to you know stylistically frame it the way we do in English. So for them, you know, the content is more important than the form. So I guess. Uh, the proper employment or deployment of a transcript does away the need of, you know, hackling with uh, words and meaning, meanings, uh, as it were. But yes, I, I must stress on the uh, vocabulary quotient. You have to have words in your stock, in your uh, barrel, in order to be able to communicate. It's a given, really. But uh, that was not really in the scope of today's talk. Maybe in some other, you know, uh, talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ubujitha. Thank you for enlightening us. Thank you. Uh, there is a question uh, from uh, Riyanka Sharma. She asked whether, you know, a person or, a, or whether someone who doesn't have the ans right answer at the right at that time, what would be that person's reply? Okay. Right. I, I suppose she's talking about the Q and A session after the presentation. So in that case, uh, firstly, you have to be very thorough while uh, while presenting. Um, that's part of the audience pre-assessment as well. You have to know what kind of audience you're presenting to, and you have to be ready with your answers. <laughs> so that's part of the research, as as you as you might have seen that I have stressed on the research quotient that every presentation requires a lot of preparation. Right, uh, you won't believe me. I prepared for almost two, three hours for this for today's presentation because I had to make it suitable for undergraduate students and postgraduate students. Usually, this is a bit more uh, technical. So I, I, I sort of anticipated the sort of questions you might ask me. So I'm ready with the answers, not because I know too much or I'm an expert, because I practiced, because I've done my research and I anticipated the um, you know question that you might ask. So I'm prepared myself to be able to answer. And in some case, if you don't have the answer right away, please uh, be honest and say, uh, uh, please excuse me, I don't have the answer with me right now, but I can always get back to you. Right? Honesty is the best policy in such cases. That's what I feel. But uh, the, the talent really lies in anticipating the questions. Right? If you go for an interview, I also take interview classes. So if you go for an interview, uh, you can all sometimes you can anticipate the kind of questions they might ask you if you practice well and if you are prepared. So 
as William Shakespeare says, the readiness is all. The trick is to be ready for whatever is coming your way and not to get uh, perturbed by minor inconveniences. Thank you. Hope it answers your question. Well, uh, I would like to request again all the participants to please put forward your questions for the resource person so that he may be able to answer your questions. Well, the questions could be put forward to the previous resource person also, Dr. Ghansham, sir. I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that you would be uh, readily you know, answering your questions. Well, uh, if there are no more questions to be asked of the uh, resource persons, then uh, we may now go ahead with our uh, concluding session. Now, I would like to inform all the participants that I would be sharing the feedback link, which would be the link for your certificates also, e-certificates. So Petri, now I would like to request, yes, sir. Hello, yes, sir. Uh, there is a question actually uh, from Omar I just see it and uh, uh, this is a question for Gondam sir. So just uh, put it for him, okay. Uh, yes, actually, you... actually I also have a question. I also have a question for uh, Professor Ghansham. Okay, please, 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 please. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, you can go ahead with the first question which um, Dr. Prashanta Chakraborty was suggesting, then I shall uh, put in my, my question. Oh, my Amaresh, uh, could you please put forward your question, or could you please uh, could you please tell your question? Amaresh. I, I think he's already written his question. question. He typed out his question. Okay. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. His so, question Amarish was, has... can you hear me? Yeah, can you yes, hear me? Sir. You are audible to me, sir. Yeah, okay. Yes, uh, the question is, uh, how to help the students where internet services are not there? And uh, he asked, you are talking talking about uh, the technology, uh, the use of technology in teaching and learning, right? So this COVID has given us an opportunity to even rethink on the use of uh, technology and also to get into those areas where technology has not reached, or even internet has not reached. So the government is taking uh, steps not only to redefine uh, internet user, but at the same time, we uh, even I means uh, various of the agencies which are providing internet services, they are also take it, taking it into consideration. How to reach the areas where internet services are not there, how to reach the people where internet is not there, and how to cope with the situation of post-COVID and even during the COVID period. So I think with the year, we will come out with uh, various other uh, options as far as internet services are concerned. And then we can... Uh, what we call blend both the things together, the real classroom and the virtual classroom to reach the unreached. Well, I think that was a very uh, beautiful way of uh, answering uh, our question, sir. To reach the unreached. Amaresh, uh, yeah. yes, another sir. question was. Uh, yes. Can, I, yeah, can I go ahead with my question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my question was, you know, uh, you spoke about, you started your lecture. Uh, I mean, you titled your lecture, you used pandemic in your title. Now, uh, yes. you see, you, yes. you spoke about the fact that uh, we have to live in a post-pandemic world and, you know, um, the new life that we are about to encounter, uh, the new normal. Uh, you know, uh, we have been, uh, we have been, 
from time to time in academia we have been trying to mold our um, syllabi our curriculum framework uh, you know uh, according to the to the needs of the times like say for example employability you know skill oriented learning these are these are uh, very pertinent and these are extremely uh, in in currency right now uh, there is an entire uh, you know uh, there is a lot of investment also on on uh, employability and skill based education etc uh, by the government of india uh, don't you think as a as a you know now you are a, uh, you, you have been a teacher and now i guess you are in the bureaucracy also uh, uh, in the department of higher education uh, don't you think that curriculum needs to be redesigned uh, wherein ecology ought to be uh, i mean not in the way in which uh, you know you have environmental sciences as a soft skills course or you know kind of a soft course in the curriculum across the universities in india but uh, don't you think uh, you know we need to redesign our um, um, course structures and our uh, you know uh, academic curriculum uh, you know considering the new normal that we are about to encounter uh, that we are about to encounter henceforth um, particularly in in relation with ecology and and, and uh, you know the environment etc in a far more pronounced manner right thank you very much that's really a wonderful question rather i must say we have to redesign our syllabi based on the adversity skills we have to redesign not only based on the adversity skills but at the same time how to cope up with these situations covid has come after a long time we haven't seen this kind of a situation in our life even our ancestors might not have seen this kind of a situation in the life now it has given us a great kind of a challenge not only to redesign the syllabi but also to redesign our way of thinking to redesign the humanitarian aspects of our life so all these things have to be redesigned now and we have to reframe the definitions so that's why not only being a teacher being a bureaucrat being a person living in the society i think each one of us have to go back to our things go back to our traditional way of uh, teaching and learning and we have to redesign it according to the natural scenario according to the nature because nature is the thing wherein we have to use the syllabi according to it and if we maintain this diversity skills in every curriculum of ours i think we are going to fight with any of the challenges whatever it may come even after 200 or 300 years because our syllabi they don't give us a chance to fight with this adversity skills we have only syllabi which educates us but never educates us how to live how to cope up so all those things yes we have to consider it not only consider it but at the same time we have to restructure it thank you very much sir thank you sir i hope we don't forget uh, all this once the pandemic is over I mean, that's exactly why no, that was we, that's what i we, wanted to uh, yeah we imply. must not forget but at the same time we have to uh, receive so many things from whatever is happening right now and these things are going to help us to reinvent and redesign and uh, reinforce the new things in the new normal thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much sir much. for answering our questions uh, if there are some more questions the participants may put it in the chat box Yeah, Patriot, I would like to uh, convey my regards and thanks to the, Dr. Prashanto Chakravarti for introducing me to you all. And uh, I'm really humbled and much obliged. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Well, if there are no more questions to be put forward to our resource persons, then I would like to... Uh, I would like to hand over this uh, session to Dr. Shurojit Sen. And before that, I would like to thank all the participants for making yourself convenient to attend this webinar, a first initiative taken by the Department of English, Netaji Subhash Mahavidyalay. And uh, 
as the organizing secretary of this webinar, I must acknowledge my thanks to our principal madam, uh, who has initiated or maybe uh, put the idea of organizing such a webinar. And uh, I also want to thank uh, Prashanta sir, who has been helpful in introducing me to approach Dr. Ghansham sir. And that is how uh, things fell into place. And one after another, I could have uh, just materialized this webinar. Thank you very much. And uh, now I would like to hand over this session to Dr. Shirojit Sen sir to propose the vote of thanks. Sure it, sir. Am I? Yeah. Hello. I am. Ready. Yes. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, first of all, um, uh, it has been a nice experience for all of us, and uh, it's my to, you know, uh, give the vote of thanks on behalf of Department of English, Mr. Shubhash Mohanvidal. Uh, Udaipur Gomuti, and first of all, I would like to thank the esteemed speakers, Professor Ganushyam and Mr. Abhijit Bhattacharya. Uh, our so kindly stop presenting. Sir. Wrote, hello, our title of that uh, of this uh, webinar was dissecting English language and literature, and uh, we found some excellent speeches from uh, these two speakers. Thank you very much. And uh, my thanks goes to Dr. Rita Das Nayak, who is our principal in charge. She has always been an inspiration to all of us. And Dr. Shramit Diabad, who is a secretary, a pleasant personality, always encouraging, always giving nice advices. And, uh, and uh, the last but not the least is Patriot De Burma, uh, Patriot. Uh, has done all the hard works. I only suggested that title of So don't listen. In that the women, thank you very much uh, for uh, participating. Uh, in near future. Hello, sir. Shoji, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Due to network problem, uh, actually, due to network problem, I could not hear anything of the vote of thanks. Uh, well, perhaps the other participants uh, must have uh, heard it. So you are uh, muted okay. now. Okay. Now should I should I carry on? Whatever I have said earlier. Patriot. Yes, please, sir. 